Hi, I'm uh, Dr. David Hessel, and I'm the director of the International Fragile X Premutation Registry. And I'm really excited to talk to Dr. Rondi Hagerman today and our guest, Scott Lorgan, um, who is a carrier of the Fragile X Premutation. And um, we're going to be talking about the registry, but first, getting to know Scott a little bit. Um, I know Dr. Hagerman and uh, uh, Mr. Lorgan have known each other for a long time, but I don't know him quite as well. So uh, this is Scott Lorgan, and um, we'll be asking you some questions about your experience and also talking about the registry today. So thanks a lot for coming, Scott. My pleasure. Great. Okay, so one of the first questions I thought would be good to talk to you about is just, you know, how did you hear about Fragile X in your family? How did you find out? that well, you guys were affected by it. My grandson, um, who was four at the time, had some developmental delays, and the regional center uh, put him through some you know, evaluations and ultimately recommended a blood work be done, which showed that he had fragile X. So okay. that was our first exposure you know, to, to the fragile X issue. Um, shortly after he was tested, then it was recommended that the whole family be tested, and so we did that. So that would have been myself, my wife, uh, and both daughters. Uh, and it turned out everybody but my wife <laughs> was a carrier. So she thought for sure it was her. Okay. Uh, but, but it wasn't. So then we, we were all tested. And at that point, FaxTaz was not uh, in the, you know, in the consciousness. So, you know, we just kind of took precautions as we could. Mm -hmm. My um, oldest daughter already had our grandson, uh, and my youngest daughter decided to do in vitro, so to avoid the chance of passing, uh, passing it along. And that worked out great in her. Mm -hmm. Her uh, daughters are now going to turn 18, and they're you okay. know, symptom free. So, so that yeah. is good. Well, so. yeah. Thanks for sharing all that background with us. It's it's good to hear that and understand where this started for you. So, I I heard just earlier we were talking, and you said that you know you used to host um, barbecues or picnics for the right. families in Northern California, right. and. Um, I was really intrigued by your story about um, talking to Sebastian Giacomont, um and maybe you could sure. tell us about that. Well, um, we were, um, I think you, you came to that, uh, you, you come, yeah. came to several, oh, yeah. there were she great was making parties. a presentation, uh -huh. and there was about 50 people there, and, and Sebastian, um, he and I were just talking, he said, oh, you know, Rondi has kind of discovered, you know, a pattern with older males that have some symptoms, mm -hmm. and, he, and he described them, you know, tremors and balance and so forth. And, you know, I, I was interested, but I didn't really grasp you know, mm -hmm. the consequences of that. And sure enough, within about two months, I started having uh, tremors. Mm -hmm. And then I thought back and said, well, you know, I should have paid more attention to Sebastian. <laughs> because he gave me a clue as to what was going on. So uh -huh. shortly after that, after I started having symptoms, then I was tested and I was discovered that I had fax tests as well. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, it's been, I think I was 58 when that was discovered. And, you know, it's been a pretty slow progression. Okay. But as I understand it, you know, the progression will continue and it will continue to be more severe, you know, as time goes on. So, you know, I, I appreciate the, you know, the, what, 20 plus years that I've had mm -hmm. with relatively minor symptoms and I'm looking forward to the studies that are coming up in the clinical trials with the hope that they may um, minimize some of the symptoms mm -hmm. that, you know, that I'm encountering. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. 
So, Dr. Hogman, Rondi, I, I refer to you as Rondi. Sure. <laughs> of course. Of Maybe, course. would you like to say a few things about you know, the kinds of trials that have been done and maybe what is coming down the line for uh, the future? Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Um, the more research and clinical trials on FAXTAS patients, the better. We've done a study, a control trial of memantine, um, which was not helpful for the tremor and balance problems, but helped a little bit with processing information in uh, the event-related potential uh, outcome measures that we had. And we also did an allopregnanolone study, which was an IV treatment um, that Scott participated in. And um, you might talk about um, uh, your experiences with that. But I think uh, that the registry will help us identify more individuals who are affected by FAXTAS and that will push more research at additional centers throughout our country and the world. But tell us uh, your experiences with the allopregnanolone IV study. You know, I, I had never done a clinical trial before. When it was first offered, I thought, what do I have to lose, you know, at this point? <laughs> and it was at two hours, three hours, uh, where I got to sit back and watch a movie and you know, and talk to nice people, and the infusion wasn't the problem. What I was amazed at is after the first infusion, um, my motor skills, like walking up steps and so forth, um, improved almost immediately. So after leaving the clinic, I was able to much more easily go up and down steps uh, without assistance. It took a little longer for the tremors, the, the intentional tremors and the head tremors to be affected, uh, and a little longer even there for the motor skills to be able to write. But I was um, really surprised that within a relatively, I think there were 12, 12 infusions, within, after the first three, the symptoms were very minimal. Um, so I, I wish that the manufacturer would have decided to go ahead with that because, at least for me, it made a tremendous difference. So, and I'm looking forward to any other clinical trials that come up. As long as I can get here and swallow the pills, I'm for it. <laughs> so. Yeah. And your neuropathy, how, how was that affected by the allopregnanolone? Well, it was minimized. Um, it didn't go away totally. But it's, it's only in my feet, so I haven't noticed it in my in my other extremities. So, um, but it was better, and now since I'm not taking anything, it it has returned. It's not painful. It's just a certain numbness in my feet. So, yeah. So yeah. we're. We're very excited. We hope we get funded for an oral allopregnanolone study that we'll do with a company called PureTech, who's developed an oral formulation, um, and I think that could be helpful. So we're excited that's, about that in the future. That's really good. And I think with the registry, um, you know, we want to try to bring in investigators to the field from other places, other universities, who have other ideas about interventions. and. Um, by having a registry um, with you know a big group of carriers who are interested in participating in trials or other research, you know we're hoping to bring in more investigators too into the field. Um, but the whole concept, you know, is just to um, uh, develop a group of carriers who are interested in participating in research, so that when there is a trial to do, we're ready to go. You know that if it's a pharmaceutical company that has a um, possible intervention or um, an investigator who has an option they want to try that there's um, people who we can send notice to who are eligible and have them ready to participate in the trials and you know a lot of other neurodegenerative conditions or neurodevelopmental disorders have registries that build a lot of um, community among families and connections and keeps everybody kind of up to date on what's happening in the field. So that's another part of the, the mission, I guess, of the registry is to keep 
people connected. Um, well, and I'm, I'm particularly interested in the registry because although the Mind Institute has done a wonderful job with the resources that you have, you're at the mercy of pharmaceutical companies and I'm, and I'm thinking that having the, the wide variety of um, manufacturers and researchers will make a, a tremendous difference. Um, you know, maybe not for me immediately, but in the long term, you know, identifying people early, identifying treatments uh, that can fit their specific needs. You know, I think that only comes with the um, with an increased scope of uh, research and uh, interaction with clients, and I would encourage any anybody who's got the FAXTAS and FX symptoms to join the registry and get ready to see improvements. Absolutely. How hard was the registry to do? I mean, a lot of people are a little bit concerned about going uh, into a registry, but the identifying information can be yeah. kept confidential. Mm -hmm. yeah, it is. And yeah. was it difficult to do? Um, you know, the complexity wasn't the issue. I, you know, I filled out enough personal information, and I and I trust the, you know, the confidentiality here. Mm -hmm. But um, I got about halfway through, and then I was because of my motor skills. I was having a little trouble working it out on my iPad, mm -hmm. so my oldest daughter came over and helped me fill out the last little bit. But you know, if you didn't have motor skill issues, it would have been no big deal. Mm -hmm. uh, you could do it easily once you get started. You know, like everything else, it's taken the first step, and uh, it only took I think about ten minutes, ten or fifteen minutes, and. Um, it wasn't at all intimidating. Um, it, it flowed well, and uh, I was glad to be able to do it, even though I had some help. Yeah. So. so it's quick and easy. It is. You're supporting research. Uh, David, do you want to talk a little bit about confidentiality, too? Yeah, I can. Um, I can talk about that. And before I do, I just wanted to mention one other thing, which is really important, is that the registry is not only for premutation carriers, but also for family members who don't have the premutation. Um, so in research, not so much for the clinical trials, but for other research studies, it's really important to have a comparison group of people to study different topics. And so having uh, family members who don't have the premutation is very important as well. So don't forget about your family members and encouraging them uh, also. Um, but in terms of uh, confidentiality, um, the data is encrypted, which means that it's uh, all kind of scrambled up and kept uh, private uh, when it's transmitted from your computer to the database, which is um, housed in a program called REDCap, which is a very widely used um, data structure, database um, system used at a lot of universities around the world. Um, so we're using that system and we uh, separate out, you know, all of the kind of personal identifying information from all of the clinical or, um, per, you know, um, demographic information that people will be providing. So um, it's very, you know, safe and, and confidential and of course the Institutional Review Board at, here at UC Davis have, has reviewed it and the Fragile X Foundation, I should mention, which is also our partner, um, you know, has, has reviewed it and is comfortable with the process too. Um, so uh, if you're interested and uh, motivated to, to sign up for the registry, please go to the website at the National Fragile X Foundation, uh, which has a link for you to sign up. Right now it's in English, but we're quickly moving to a Spanish translation version of the registry. And then of course it's international, so we're going to be kind of building that out and um, including other languages as well. So I think we'll stop there and I want to thank Scott for coming to talk to us today. Sure. It's been great to get to know you and thanks for all your uh, supportive words and things okay. like that. And also Rondi, my mentor for so many years for joining us. It's uh, great. So, so please much. sign up. You will help research. 
and we will work together to find better and better treatments for fax tasks and also for Fragile X syndrome, even though those with the full mutation are not included in this registry, but there are other uh, registries for those with the full mutation, including the forward study. Thank you very much.